This program is fan generated. If you'd like to support us, please go to jamieglassop.com and also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. All your support are greatly appreciated. Good evening. Welcome to the Jamie Glassoff moment. Tonight, our Stockholm syndrome with Islam. Wanted to share a few of my thoughts uh, this week with you on on a, on a certain phenomenon uh, that's uh, really endangering the West and Western civilization. Let me begin with this. Um, in our family and our extended family, I wasn't alive yet when uh, when Stalin had died. Um, there was a particular older lady in our extended family that was weeping very much when Stalin had died, as were many Russians. But there were some in our family that weren't crying. And the lady that was crying was rebuking and reprimanding one of the other women that was not crying and that was very happy. And the happy lady began to rip pictures of Stalin on purpose to torment the, the weeping lady and began to flush those pictures down the toilet after she ripped them. And the lady that was crying was horrified and said to her, what are you doing? You're going to get all of us killed. And my point here is that the person who is weeping for the death of the dictator, that supports the dictator and the regime, on the other hand is terrified that she and other people will be killed uh, if the regime finds out that they oppose the dictator. Um, why I'm bringing up this e example, ladies and gentlemen, is it has always been on my mind is a story that's told in our family. And I've often reflected on this phenomenon. Uh, it's interconnected with the Stockholm Syndrome uh, and, of course, other syndromes. But it is the identification with, the empathy with, the support of, the defense of your captor, your abuser, and your potential executioner. And this is a phenomenon that's, that's, that's taking over our society vis-a-vis -vis Islam and Jihad because of the denial that we're experiencing. When we are out on Third Street Promenade on, uh, on Saturday evenings with the Counter Jihad Coalition, we often experience something very interesting and it's connected to the story I just told. A lot of Muslim girls from Saudi Arabia, from other places in the Middle East, when they approach us and they see that we're saying certain things about Islam and about the Prophet Muhammad, they yell at us with tremendous anger and they're, they're, they, they hate us and they're insulting us and they're right and we're wrong. We should not be criticizing Muhammad. Muhammad was perfect. We should not be criticizing Islam. Islam is beautiful and peaceful, and we're wrong, and they call us many names. And then if we by any chance take a picture of them, they come up to us and on the brink of tears, and some of them weep. They're begging us to erase the picture of them because they're terrified because something may happen. Steve Amundsen, uh, the head of the Counter Jihad Coalition, called me recently, and he had an episode of this. Again, this happens all the time. And he said, Jamie, I was down there, and the Saudi girls were screaming and yelling at me and how wrong we are and how great Islam is. And a picture was taken, and one of them was begging me for about a half an hour to please delete the photo because if anyone sees how she is dressed back in her country, she may get killed or suffer tremendous punishment. And I'm bringing this up again because this is very interesting. You are screaming and yelling at us and we are wrong, but the system and ideology that you are defending will annihilate and execute or persecute or imprison you for your freedom and we're trying to free you, but you're criticizing us. Now, now you're getting the point here. But this is very much on my mind, ladies and gentlemen, because this form of Stockholm Syndrome and its various other syndromes, it has taken over our culture. And what we see is there's many, many, on the one hand, there are many brave Muslim women who break from Islam and tell the truth and fight for the truth. But there's another form of Muslim women, and you see them 
trying to out-radicalize others, to out-radicalize even their potential executioners. We know about these Muslim women that put on the burqas and they run around in certain areas in the Muslim world and they punish and beat the Muslim women who might show a piece of hair or a piece of lipstick, etc. This is the way that people try to ingratiate themselves with their potential executioners. And they do this by out-radicalizing them often. I'm mentioning several realms of this phenomenon. It's a Stockholm Syndrome. Uh, Kenneth Levin has written a book, The Oslo Syndrome, very important, and he shows how many Israelis are engaged in this delusion where, you know, if they just give some more land, if they just give a few more hugs, if they just give a little bit more money, then somehow the Palestinian death cult will not want to kill them. Very important for us to face the truth, ladies and gentlemen. The West is in a conflict with Jihad and Stealth Jihad, and Jihad and Stealth Jihad are inspired and sanctioned by Islamic theology. And many people are in denial about this on various realms, and some of the stories I've told here tonight are important for us to reflect on because this kind of thinking has taken over our culture, and it's incapacitating us. And in the Gospels, um, ladies and gentlemen, in John 8, 32, uh, Jesus tells us then, that then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And ladies and gentlemen, the truth is often a very difficult thing to accept for internal reasons and for external reasons. In the context of jihad and telling the truth today in Western culture, um, you have to accept a very frightening reality, but you will also be marginalized, you will be disempowered, you will be slandered like great people that are telling the truth, like Robert Spencer and Pamela Geller and David Horowitz and, and all these great counter jihad freedom fighters. But ladies and gentlemen, in the end, it is our freedom. Because Muhammad Atta, when he was on that plane, at 9-11, and he said to everyone, be quiet and nothing will happen to you. People were quiet, but they did die. So ladies and gentlemen, our silence and our delusion will lead to our death, but our acceptance of the truth and our proclaiming of the truth will set us free. Thank you for joining the Jamie Glazoff Moment. We'll see you on the next episode.